Hello everybody, this is Niklas Huschmidt and welcome to a new episode of the Play Magnus series and we're playing once again against Magnus at the age of 17 so let's get to him. Last game was a draw. A uh, tough fight but I managed to hold him to a draw even though I was worse, I guess, a significant part of the game but I managed somehow so let's see how this one goes. The Sicilian, the Sicilian, all right. Well, okay, let's play the open Sicilian. Yes, he goes for the searching coffin. This is a line we had in the past, and it has always favored me, so um, I'm happy to repeat it. Exactly, a5, because here his theory doesn't seem to be up to date. He always plays this bad line with bishop h6, and I mean, if we can take advantage of it, why wouldn't we, right? Why wouldn't we? So now, um, rook g1. We definitely had this in a game before. Don't ask me which age. Don't ask me because it's been a while. But we definitely had this in a game and I was, I was winning. So castle, I was threatening g5 by the way. Now I'm going to threaten g5 again. He goes g6. <laughs> I already know all his moves because I had this against him. A few times already, honestly. But okay. And uh, now I like this g5 move. Now let's play it. And he goes back. And here I could take on f6. I think what I did in the past mostly was let go bishop h3. But we could also go some new ways and take on f6. But after bishop takes f6, he's... I cannot go h5 because of bishop h4, so that's annoying. So, bishop h3 or long castle. Those are, I guess, the options I have. He will play f5 either way, I'm pretty sure. And I kind of want to take off the, the light squared bishop. Oh, I think what I did in the other game, I played h5. Ah, h5 is also a cool move because he can't take because of g takes f6. And then he also played f5, I'm pretty sure. He also played f5. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, sometimes it turned out that my pawn g5 was weak. On the other hand, locking him in completely is kind of tempting. This is kind of tempting. All right, so let's play h5. He'll go f5. And now he takes. Ah, maybe I played in a different move order last time. <laughs> and now maybe I messed up a little bit, but no, I think my position is still, still fairly decent. Okay, if I go h takes g6. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, long think. I've never seen this <laughs> from Magnus. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when he becomes stronger. He takes more time. Um, and now I could trade queens, play queen takes g5. And I think the end game should be quite, quite nice. But um, the other option is to go bishop h3. Because the pawn g5, I'll win it at some point anyway. And I'm still having my hopes up that I can get some kind of attack going against his opened uh, king. I mean, another move would be to just castle queenside. But then in some lines, uh, the pawn f2 might be hanging. So uh, bishop h3, I kind of like. like. Do I like it so much I want to play it? Yes, I think so. I think so. Rook f4. All right. He's offering the exchange. He is offering the exchange and he's threatening to take on e4. So I cannot take on c8 really because he takes on e4 with check. That would be hmm, annoying. If I play f3, does he go g4? Maybe. Maybe g4 would be 
annoying, but maybe I can go bishop g4, bishop g4, and then knight f4. Yeah, that works actually. So g4 is not a problem after f3. Okay, maybe we should check for a moment what happens after knight takes f4. Obviously he takes with the e-pawn to open up his buried bishop. And um, then I have to move my queen. And I have to keep my bishop protected. So probably... Yo, that's... I want to say queen d3. Okay, queen d3 works because after knight e5 I have queen d5 check. I have queen d5 check anyway. I mean, that's kind of nice. Hmm. That is kind of nice. Wait, why shouldn't I take the exchange? Knight takes f4, e takes f4. I mean, g takes f4, queen takes g6. So knight takes f4, e takes f4, queen d3. Knight e5, I have queen d5 check. And the rook is hanging on a8. So that... There's no way he can do that, right? I mean, he has this knight f3 check. But... I have king d1. No, this is just losing. So you cannot go knight e5. He can trade bishops, of course. He can trade bishops and then play bishop takes b2, but I go queen e6 check and rook d1. I mean, this must be must be good, right? Huh. Ha ha ha. Ha huh, ha huh, ha. Huh. Okay, f3. It's a move. Ha, huh, difficult. I can play positionally by going f3. Or I can play. I can take the material. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, the only line I'm really not sure about is knight takes f4, e takes f4, queen d3, bishop takes h3. I also have queen d5 here, but it doesn't really look convincing. So I take back the bishop on h3, he takes on b2, I play rook d1, and he goes... Or may, well... Yeah, let's say I go queen e6 check first, king g7, rook d1. And then he goes bishop e5, defending the pawn d6. And um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about his position. My knight is so bad on c2, and he he's, he's going to go a4, b3 next. Well, I can play c5, though, then. <sighs> well, I think I should follow my recipe that worked in previous games. And um, play it safe and go f3. Especially since I don't see any good reply from him that's like scaring me. At just this g4 move, I'm gonna check one more time. Bishop takes g4, bishop takes, knight takes f4, and after e takes f4, if queen takes g4, knight e5, knight e5, queen g2. Nah, that should be fine. All right. Rook h4. Okay. Well, now I'll trade bishops. I mean, that's what I want to do anyway, right? So he cannot take with the queen because of queen takes g5. I mean, at least that looks annoying to him. So he should take with the rook. Okay. And now I can take on g5. And he just keeps this notoriously bad bishop on g7. I could also castle queenside now. It's difficult to see what he's going to do next. Maybe bishop h6? But yeah, my knight is completely dominating him. I mean some of his pieces at least, right? He, he cannot really 
move his queen. So if I castle, does he have knight d4? That doesn't seem to be an issue. I can take rook takes c4, knight c2. And if he moves his knight somewhere else. Dum da dum. I mean, sure, he could play knight e7, but I just take the knight and play knight e3. Now this looks great. I'll castle. Knight e7, he plays like this, but now I'm going to take the knight and play knight e3. We have this... Well, or do I want to take? I could also play the knight back to e3 and be like, well, now your knight is sitting on e7. What is it going to do? That's actually also very tempting because knight e7 kind of helps him to get into a game, it feels like. By the way, I shouldn't take on g5 because of bishop h6. Um, but knight e3 would probably threaten queen takes g5. So after knight e3, I would expect him to go back knight c6. When I have different options, maybe I can go b3. But b3 always allows him to kind of attack my pawn chain there with a4, and maybe in some lines he gets counter play on the a-file. So not a move I would like to play. On the other end, after knight e3, knight c6, he's threatening knight d4. Kind of. Kind of, kind of. I mean, maybe after knight e3, and after knight d3, I mean, he could, after knight c6, I could take on g5, but yeah, not sure, not sure about that endgame. If, if knight c e3 here, if I move my other knight to e3, he can take on d5. And I cannot take with the knight because my pawn on c4 is hanging. I mean, I could, but sacrificing another pawn seems a little bit too much and also not necessary. I could take with both the rook, though. But then, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. But let's play this for now. Bishop f6, okay. He protects the pawn. I can go knight g4. Attacking his bishop when he needs to go knight c6 probably. Ha <laughs> ha I could also go to king b1 for now. Is that smart? I don't know. King feels a little bit better on b1. It's a trademark move in the Sicilian. Another move is knight g2, but really doesn't do much. No, doesn't look like it. Um... Okay, one line I should probably check is knight g4, knight c6, knight f6, even though that move hurts to exchange the bishop, but the bishop is a defending piece. Queen takes f6 and then queen takes g5. He needs to trade. Yeah, he needs to trade. Queen takes, rook takes g5, and then both d6 and g6 are hanging. And looks like a promising endgame. He would probably go knight d4. 
Yeah, knight d4 might be an issue because after knight takes d4, you can go rook c4. Probably you guys cannot follow it anymore. I'm sorry about that. So, um, but the point is that after knight c2, then he can go rook h2, rook d2, rook h1, check, and it's a perpetual. So, can I deviate from that line anywhere? Knight g4, uh, knight, knight g4, knight c6, knight f6, queen f6, queen g5 takes, rook takes, knight d4. Huh. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, that would be kind of a... That would, that would mean it would uh, be helpful to play b3 here. But b3, like I said, I'm not a big fan of this move. The other option would be to go king b1. Okay, king b1, what is he going to do? Knight c6? But then I could go knight d5 back and... Um, Oh, yeah, let's just go king b1. Queen b6. I uh, see, if I go knight g4, he just wants to move his bishop back, apparently. Just gonna move it back to g7 as it looks like. And with the queen on b6, he might have some ideas with b3 suddenly. But not sure if there's a problem because I can always just go a3. If I don't have my knight on c2, obviously. But that was my plan, to go knight g4, bishop g7, and knight c e3. And then b3, I can go a3. And I keep everything closed. I mean, the question is if I can then improve my position further. But, um, well, we can just try and see. The knight is kind of awkward on g4, though. Okay, let's play it. Queen c5. I don't know what this move is doing. Rook g4 is not a threat because I can just go fg, for example. Um, so now I'm going to double on the d file. Rook g2 and uh, rook d2. Maybe queen c5 is preparing knight c6 because it's protecting a pawn on d6. If knight c6 immediately, I could have taken on d6. So maybe that's the plan. No, but rook g2, knight c6, rook d5. That should be good for me. Still, my, I'm a little bit... Uh... A little bit weird to remove my rook from g1. Maybe I should play rook d2 or rook d3, something like that. So I keep one rook on the first rank if I take with the rook on d6 in some lines. Maybe rook d2 is a smarter way to do it. What about rook h1, by the way? Is, that any, is there any point in doing anything along the h file probably not this his rook is actually pretty bad uh on on h4 it's really out of the game so rook d2 looks good knight c6 rook d5 rook g4 fg that's no problem okay rook h5 okay that's not a move i was fearing 
rook c6. So he's defending passively. That's that's good. But the next question is how can I keep improving my position? The queen is kind of not in the most beautiful space. Place. Uh, space, place. Uh, so I could move it. Queen g2 and then maybe rook d3, queen d2, something like that. It's funny, we kind of once again have a maneuver position. I mean, these are the positions. If I can crack the computer anywhere, it's in those kind of positions. Um, okay, queen g2 makes sense to me. What else can I do? Does knight d5 make any sense? He just takes... no. I mean, it's an option, but... I don't see that it really benefits me. I still don't want to go b3 because I just give him an anchor pawn with a4, so I go queen g2. King f7. Yeah, it makes sense. He he's gonna bring his rook back. He's gonna bring his rook back. Makes sense. All right, I'll follow up with my plan. Rook d3. Nonetheless. Not sure how much this plan is really doing, but I don't see anything better for now, so let's do it. He brings his rook back. The only thing is, if I go queen d2 now, he might play rook h3. Okay, if he goes rook h3, I can, in the worst case, I can just go back. And he has to move his rook again. So we can just try and see what happens after queen d2. Yeah, he plays rook h3. Makes sense. Okay, let's go back. So obviously we could repeat moves, but we're we're doing pretty well here. So this it wouldn't make sense to make a draw here. So we just gotta find a way to not allow counterplay by his rook and somehow create some threats. What about knight f2? Knight f2 is threatening the pawn on g5. Probably, unless he has bishop h6. Oh, there's also another idea. There's maybe the idea to go then knight d5 in some lines. Because then if he takes, it can go e takes d5 and bring the knight to e4 next move. But this is kind of vague. Hmm. 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 Dum da dum da dum. Yeah, I don't want to go b3. Still don't want to do it. Just a4. It's, it's annoying. How can I improve my position? How can I improve my position? I mean, knight f2, rook h5, knight h3, bishop f6, doesn't really, doesn't really do much. Let's just make a move and see what he plays. Queen back, okay. Knight c8. Okay, you know, at least something's happening, right? We're always happy if something's happening. I mean, this is really asking for knight e5, let's be honest. 
This is so asking for knight d5. Um, knight d5, queen c5, or what? I mean, queen d2 is also very possible. With the threat of knight d5 and queen takes g5. Potentially. Yeah, let's just play this. So after knight d5, he wants to go queen d8? Oh, is he going to allow me to take on g5? Maybe it's just going to allow me to take on g5. Hold on, though. Um, I could go knight d5, queen c5, queen g2, but then he takes on c4. And if I take on h3, he plays queen c2 and queen c1 checkmate. So let's go queen g2. Push the rook back. Yeah, he defends g5, that makes sense. And... Um, Now I was just going to go knight d5 and bring the other knight to e3. Knight d5, knight e3. King g8 back, okay. So maybe I should go after g5 pawn again. Somehow. Maybe queen g4 first? I mean, queen g4 looks looks tempting. To also stop him from going queen d7. He'll probably go queen f7 then. But still, I like queen g4. I like this move. Having an eye on the knight. Maybe having knight f5 as an option sometimes. Doesn't do much though, but it's an option. Rook h1, how do I feel about rook h1? Nah, I don't feel rook h1. Yeah, queen f7 was expected. Now, hmm. can I go a3? Is that smart or is that stupid? Also, do I have to watch out for rook h2? Hmm, questions, questions, many questions. Uh, A3 looks kind of strong, to be honest. But I'm worried about my king. <laughs> I feel like I might be punished later. Uh, Rook G1 would be the alternative. <laughs> yeah, 
maybe I shouldn't be so scared. But ah, then again, ah, maybe I should be scared. <laughs> it's a computer after all. Always got to be scared against computer. That he'll checkmate me in some way or the other. Nah, whatever. Yeah, that was exactly what I was talking about. Now if I take on b6, he takes back and is threatening rook h2. <laughs> so I cannot take on a5. But I can take on b6, play queen c8 check. King h7 and knight uh, d5. He has to go rook b7. It also looks a little bit loose. This is getting, again, a little bit messy. But I guess it's you can't avoid it, really. So if I go rook a5, he goes knight c4, or what? I guess so. That must be his idea, go. Okay. Takes, takes. Now, knight d5. Knight d5, and if you if he plays rook b8 or something, I'll just take on a7, uh, a5, excuse me. It's just risky. Risky, risky, risky. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared. Okay, knight d5 can't be wrong. Ah, uh, what if he d what if he plays rook c6 back? Rook a5, rook c4. Hmm. 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 Okay, queen c8 and knight d5 makes actually a lot of sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. No, queen c8 first, excuse me. Knight d5. Rook b7, and now he threatens rook h2, but I'll just play rook d2. And that should be really in control here I I could take on a5 now but rook h2 um, no I can I cannot take on a5 he also has queen f3 not nah, that doesn't look good ah rook d2 no I'm the queen is perfect on c8 it's also it's keeping an eye on h3 so you cannot go rook h3 I mean one thing he could no he cannot no rook d2 I mean everything's safe it looks like a4, uh huh. A4, what is this? Okay, now I go king a2. Wait, I can also go rook takes a4, right? 
Why is he gonna go rook b3 then? Maybe he's in Tsukta, maybe that's why he played a4. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's not like he has that many useful moves. King a2, is he gonna go rook b3 then? Maybe, yeah? Maybe he's gonna go rook b3. But maybe I can answer with rook d3 then. Yeah, rook b3 seems to be his idea. Huh. <laughs> his king proves to be pretty safe over there, unfortunately. And I should really keep my pawn f f3, because otherwise his g-pawn is going to run. It's going to run quickly. Okay, I don't see a problem with king a2, rook b3, rook d3, but it just feels a little bit passive. I'd love to play differently if I can, but um, what to do against rook b3? Oh. I don't see another solution, unfortunately. Yeah, but then he's gonna activate his rook and... Uh, I don't like this. I don't like this. But what to do? what to do. Rook A4, Rook B3. King a2. King a2, probably rook f3. If queen f3, if rook a7. Rook f3. Hmm. Now maybe there's something like queen b8. Yeah, I like this try better, honestly, because king a2, rook b3. I mean, I could play this way too, this way around, obviously. But um, king a2, rook b3, rook d3 is too passive. I can't do this. Let's take b3 and now I just want to go king a2. Or what if I go queen a8? Now I want to get out of the check, so king a2. <laughs> Rook f3 and now I want to go queen b8 to play rook a7. I somehow need to get my rook on the 7th rank, but if I go rook before he has queen a7, which would be really unpleasant. Uh, what is his next move? 
Not so clear, yeah? His, my queen is still perfectly placed and his queen barely has any squares. But playing b4 now is, is probably too much. I mean, yeah. Is that too much? <sighs> b4. Seems like pure craziness. No, that would also invite rook f2. I shouldn't do that. Now, queen b8 is kind of logical. I'm attacking a d6 pawn. I'm threatening rook a7. But I'm just... The, the only negative thing is, is that I'm allowing him to move his g-pawn. And the g-pawn is scary. Queen b8, g4, rook a7. Queen e6, only square. Rook e7 is actually... Oh no, queen g8 he also has. If I go like rook g2, he'll probably just play rook f2. I mean, also after queen b8, he, go, he can go rook f2. No, he can because of rook a7. Rook takes... Uh, queen takes a7, queen takes a7, rook d2, knight f6 should be good for me. So queen b8, g4, rook a7... Queen g8. Yeah, but I feel like that's what I gotta do. H4. So if the rook a7, where does he want to go? g8, yeah? I mean, he needs to go to g8 or e8. Uh, g8, well, he can also go to f8, in fact. I was going to say g8 or e6, but... Um, okay. Okay, 7. Queen f8, it is. Now I could go queen b7 and protect an e4 pawn indirectly. Because rook e4 have knight of 6. But then he'll just start pushing his pawn. I mean, I guess he'll he'll start pushing his pawn anyway. That's really a problem. That is really a problem. g4, g3, incoming. Yeah. Hmm. What to do? <laughs> This pawn is really quick. Really, really quick. And really difficult to stop. Hmm. All right. What can we try?
queen c7, g4, knight e7 maybe. Yeah, I don't see any better try. <laughs> ah, now he can take, of course. Yeah, of course he can take now. Oh, that was the difference. Mm, I'm getting a little tired here. Okay, 97 now. Well, but queen b7, g4 would have been also pretty bad, I'm sure. Knight c3. Knight c3, knight e7, what's the best shot? Knight c3, rook d4 is the issue. Okay, but maybe then rook g2. If g4 have rook h2, that should be good. Could also play rook g2 here. How is he going to defend that pawn? That's this not over yet. Rook g2, what is he going to do? I guess he'll give me the g5 pawn. But with my battery on the 7th rank, I'm definitely still in the game. Rook g2. Is he going to play king h6? Uh, king h6 could be the problem. Just defend the pawn of the king. <laughs> that sucks. Okay. Um, Ninety seven doesn't look right. For some reason. Oh, actually, rook g2, g4, rook h2, rook h3. He can move the other rook in between. That That's annoying. Okay, so rook g2 doesn't do anything then. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Hmm, just looks cool but doesn't do much. Knight c3, rook d4, rook h2, rook h4, knight e4 was thinking. But I think it's just bad. Hmm. 
What can I do still? Uh, dum -da -dum. Okay, maybe I can go rook g2, g4, queen d7. But then he'll just take the pawn on c4. It's this is not gonna do it. Still might be my best shot. Rook h4. What? Why? Is this attack against the b2 pawn so strong that you can just give me the g5 pawn? Apparently. So if I go rook g5, he just wants to go like rook h2. Follow with rook f2. Hmm. <laughs> That's funny. But not that funny. <laughs> yeah, rook g5, rook h2, and I uh, can't stop rook ff2 really under any good circumstances. Annoying. Yeah. What now? Yeah, honestly, I don't see anything. I can still try. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That was to be expected. E4, threatening rook takes B2. King H6. And now rook ff2 is coming with devastating force. If he had played rook ff2 immediately, I could have still gone queen king a3. That was kind of my hope, I guess. But now, all hope's gone. A queen e7. Trade queens. Hope for the best. <laughs> B 
But he'll play queen b8. No, he can't do that now. Yeah, maybe queen e7. Maybe play queen h8. I mean, that would be a cool move at least. Queen e7. Let's see what else to do. Rook f2. Okay, what if I go queen e4 now? Probably bishop b2 is a pain. Queen e4, bishop b2, I'm not going to survive this, right? So let's trade off queens. Rook takes, and now at least I can go king a3, I thought. But I'm probably here some tactics of some sort. Yeah, e3 after king a3. Ugh. E3. Okay, let's see this. Uh, yeah, rook E7, he's going to play rook A8 check. And b4, he's going to play e2, followed by rook f1. That's, that's bad. Knight e3 doesn't work because of rook f3. And winning by pinning. Okay, rook e7. I feel like I'm getting mated pretty soon. e2, still. What am I missing? Rook e1? Uh, and then he gives the check. On a8, apparently. King b3, rook b8. But can they still play knight b4? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Probably he'll play like bishop f8 then. Or d5. Yeah, the end is near, it feels like. Okay, he threatens rook f1, so my options are limited. Knight f4, no, knight f4 he takes, knight c3 he takes. So rook e1 seems to be only move. Knight e3, does that do anything? I threaten knight g4, but I'm afraid he won't fall for it. Knight d3, rook h3 probably. Threatening to take on e3 and play rook f1. No, that's actually not a threat. Okay, rook e1, rook a8 check, king b3, rook b8 check, knight b4, bishop f8, rook e2, rook e2, rook e2 d5 and I cannot save my knight on b4 so that's gonna be it so knight e3 
Knight e3 is going to check me twice and then take on b2. Uh, okay, that's not going to do it either. So rook e1. Check. Yeah, if I move back. He can take on b2. Unless I play king a3, when he cannot play rook b2 because of rook g7. But he'll come up with something else uh, for sure. King a3. Hmm. Rook h3 check maybe. Yeah, that looks strong. Oh, bishop b2. Whoops. Okay, that was another way to win. Now rook a3 is the checkmate threat. And... Last thing I can try is knight c2. But after rook c3... No, what is he going to do? Rook c3, yeah. And now checkmate is coming. We can play it out on the board for you guys. There it is. Checkmate. Yes, sir. All right, well, that was a tough game. Uh, I think I was doing well for most of it, but maybe this this decision A3 after all was, was not good. Just giving him too much play against my king and then I couldn't really keep it all together. Yeah, and after F3 falls, my king is just less safe than his king and uh, that's a problem. And his g-pawn is always quick and his king, yeah, is, is pretty well protected with the bishop. But interesting, strategic strategic struggle as always. And um, yeah, I'm still, still having my hopes up. I'll get him. I think I'll get him eventually. Just will take some time. It's a tough nut to crack. All right, you guys. I know it was a long video, it just always takes a while, these games. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, let me know in the comments. And see you soon, bye bye.